if I walk over there and sit next to Mr. Johnson and carry my phone, does Google know that I was sitting here and then I moved over there? You're welcome anytime, Judge. <laughs> yes or no? I genuinely don't know without knowing well, I'm what I'm shocked you is. don't know. Do you or do you not collect identifiers like name, age, and address? Yes or no? If you're creating an account, yes, and using an account, yes. yes. Specific search histories when person types something into a search bar? If you have search history turned on, yes. Device identifiers like IP address or IMEI? Uh, depending on the situation, we could be collecting it, yes. GPS signals, Wi-Fi signals, Bluetooth beacons? You know, it would, would depend on the specifics, so, but there may be situations, yes. The GPS, yes. Uh, yes, if you have the location. Voice and conversations when using Google Voice products. We give an option to turn on or off. And but if, but if, if a person didn't know it, voice and conversations when using Google Voice products. Uh, yes. We only record when they initiated with uh, OK Google and then say the terms after. Contents of emails and Google Documents. We store the data, but we don't read or look at g your Gmail. But you have you access to them. Uh, as, a, as a company, we have access to them, yes. So you could. Saying you don't or don't, I'm not asking do you or don't. I'm saying you could, though there is a possibility. We have clear established policies uh, on how we would do that data. And their privacy policies, speaking of that, has changed 28 times, including eight times since January 2016. So I think the policies, are, you know, and this is why I'm asking these questions. There are, there are many things we, we, we don't collect. For example, we don't collect, uh, you could have a product like Google Home, we won't collect conversations unless you specifically ask us to, so you ask a question. And so we definitely are very careful and minimize the data we need to, to provide the service back to our users. Why, number one, does Google need all this information? We can answer that in the fact that 85, 86% of your revenue comes from advertising, so we know you manipulate the data in some ways. However, can you explain what you do to minimize this data, which is generally an accepted standard practice among those who collect data? You know, our goal is, uh, you know, but we are providing, for example, if we are providing you a service like Gmail, which we have done for 15 years, uh, that, that data, we need to store it for our users, so they expect us to. So we are trying hard to match users' expectations. We don't need, you know, our data for advertising, as I said earlier, most of it comes from just the keywords you type. And so, you know, we need minimal data to do advertising. We give you options to turn ads personalization off. We store most of the data we do today to help give users the experience they want, and that's what we're trying to do. Do you believe that Google has been, has been brought out here in some question is biased? Uh, Congressman, it's really important to me that we approach our work in an unbiased way. Do you way. believe that Google is biased? It's either yes or no. No, uh, no, not in our approach. How do you explain this apparent bias on Google's part against conservative points of view, against conservative uh, policies? Is, is it just the algorithm, or, or is there more happening there? Congressman, I, I understand the frustration at seeing negative news, and you know, I see it on me, on Google. There are times you can search on Google, and page after page there's negative news which we reflect. But what, what is important here is we use a robust methodology to reflect what is being said about any given topic at any particular time. And we try to do it objectively using a, a set of rubrics. It is in our interest to make sure we reflect uh, uh, what's happening out there in the best objective manner possible. This weekend I was on MSNBC four times, and yet the first thing that comes up is the Daily Caller, not exactly a liberal but I guess well-known group. Then it's roll call, then Breitbart News, then the Memphis Business Journal, then Breitbart News, then Breitbart. So it looks like you are overly using conservative news organizations on your news. And I'd like you to look into overuse of conservative news organizations to put on liberal people's news on Google. And if you'd let me know about that, I'd appreciate it. You know, we do get concerns across both sides of the aisle. Uh, you know, I can, I can assure you we do this in a neutral way. Mm -hmm.